ever in 1988, and she piloted the run from the sideline to the dance last March. Well, Stan, tonight just the 10th meeting all time between the Irish and the Deeks. Wake has never beaten Notre Dame. However, and this is a big however, the last two meetings have both been very close. Wake has been right there at the end the last two times these two teams played. Let's see what happens tonight. It is refreshing for sure to have an ACC Thursday with all seven games that were scheduled set to tip off. 14 of the 15 teams in the league in action tonight. Wake with the first offensive possession. Annalise Williams, who didn't shoot it all that much in Tallahassee, misses her first shot today. Versus the zone, Notre Dame saw it, recognized had a good look there. Wake's got to get off to a good start, more importantly on offense, but also on the defensive side. They've got to be able to stop the inside out game. Here's Olivia Miles from Phillipsburg, New Jersey. And Maya Dotson has been an impact player transferring in from Stanford. On the perimeter, Maddie Westbell, last year's freshman of the year, rejected by Naya Becker. And a great start defensively for the Deeks. Well, the athleticism of Becker was shown there. She can come over on the weak side, defender, gets the block, stops him. That's a good defensive stand. As we just said, you've got to be solid on the defense. This, this Notre Dame team can hurt you so many ways. Our weight travels. Williams along with Spear, Becker, Samiel, and Mora. Dan, it was interesting in the open for you to talk about Jewel Spear in a way like she hadn't been playing well lately because she's still leading the ACC in score and average about 20 points a game. Yes, the numbers have dipped a little bit in ACC play, and she's making that adjustment being the really the first, second, and third offensive option on the scouting report every game. Yeah, she, and she's got to get some help from her teammates, and she's also got to find a way to get some easy baskets in transition, some things like that. Nice jump shot that time by Mabry, one of the better three-point shooters in the conference. Dara Mabry gets the Irish on the board, and a pretty good look. Olivia Samiel cannot get Wake in the score column. I'll tell you this quickly, Evan. Wake Forest cannot have empty possessions. It's not, it's not rocket science we're talking about, but they've got to be able to score the basketball. Notre Dame, third in the ACC in scoring, averaging about 78 points a ball game. The Deeks average about 68. Elise Williams running the offense, picked up by Miles, banks it in to get Wake on the scoreboard for the first time. And Elise has struggled scoring the last couple of games. That's got to give her a lot of confidence. Get right down the lane, score off the glass. Williams did not score in 22 minutes of basketball at Florida State, where Wake lost 87 to 46. Splitting the two meetings this year with the Seminoles after coming from behind in overtime just before New Year's. Becker gets the rebound, brings it up the floor herself. Christina Mora with a quick move, draws contact, and Dobson Fowler. Great job by Mora. We were watching in warm ups and the early warm ups. Mora working on her inside game. She along with Samil, with Dane Sparrow, who works with the post players. And that up and under move, she traditionally kind of goes to the left side. This time takes it left, steps under, gets the contact, saving the finish. Chris is an outstanding free throw shooter. Well, Christina Mora has picked up her offense the last couple weeks. Double figures in four of her last seven ball games. Look at the numbers in ACC play superior to what they were in the non-conference, which is encouraging news for Jen Hoover. Well, that's unusual for her. She's normally an 80% free throw shooter to miss both of them. And yes, she has picked up the score in the last couple of weeks. Remember, she missed three basketball games just before the holidays leading into the first conference game with some illness. So it's good to see her back out there and also be in another score. Olivia Miles with great quickness to get to the bucket. And the foul's going on Wake's Nia Becker. 
Miles has the ability, Evan, to get to the basket. And you're going to see her take it with one hand so many times. One-handed pass, one-handed drive, one-handed drive and shoot. A quick first step gets in the lane, gives her a chance to go to the free throw line. Well, she's just having a special season. She's had double-digit assists in four different ball games this year. It's only happened one other time, all ACC players all season. She had a triple-double, of course, against Valparaiso on December the 8th. He is a high-volume ball handler. As we came into this game, 105 assists, only 49 turnovers. But she's had four or five games where she's had double digits almost turnovers. She had nine against Georgia, had five against UConn. Can't turn the ball over, but she's a high-volume player. You're going to expect that. Becker, elbow jumper, comes up short. And Miles scoots in for the rebound. You can see Coach Ivy saying, push it, push it. Miles did play six ball games for Notre Dame last year and rolled early after her high school season was canceled. Maddie Westbell was a superstar last year for Notre Dame, burying the elbow J. Westbell comes in there with about 14 points a game. He's a solid mid-range shooter. He's not going to take a lot of threes, but when she catches the ball 10 or 12 feet away, you can almost count it. Now you have Becker launching the three. She's only made two of them all season. And going back to Wake Forest. Early substitution. Alyssa Andrews going to replace Becker. Darren Avery's done a pretty good job sticking to Jewel Spear so far, Stan. Jewel has not had a field goal attempt in the first four minutes. Really hasn't touched the basketball much. Playing this zone, there's going to be openings for her, but she's got to move, the move without the basketball, find those gaps. Andrews right off the bench shooting. And the rebound for Westfeld. Miles just has a look to her. The glasses to the shorts. There Her game stands out too, and oh, Ken Hoover yeah. wants a timeout. Oh, Miles oh, navigating through traffic like a pro. An early 9-2 lead for the Fighting Irish in their first game since January the 2nd. Today's pros need today's tools, and the Home Depot is here to help with job site delivery to keep you on site and on schedule. Struggled to get going, and it is certainly early here tonight, but the Deacons one for six in the early going this evening, Stan. Yeah, those two games against Miami and Florida State, one win, one loss, but they were also five of 16 against Miami, four of 18 from three line, and, and only, and without rebound against Florida State by 14, and we've talked all year long about Wake's ability to rebound. It cannot be out rebounded and also shot. Christina Mora unable to score inside. Brunel might have gotten a piece of it in her first possession off the bench. No one to leave her open in the corner. Dara Mabry cashes in her second three of the quarter. Mabry comes into this game having made 33 point baskets, seventh best in the conference, and she gets great range, partly because of the fact that great penetration that you see from Miles, also because of that inside game of West Bell and Dobson. Another good look on the other side, and she bears it. Wake Forest has got to find a way to stop the basketball first and foremost. It's a 9 nothing run that includes a couple of Darren Mabry triples. Mabry now on the bench. That ball deflected, loose on the floor. Samiel keeps it alive, shot clock's at 11. Two defenders running at Spear anytime she catches the ball stand. And a good strong rebound there for Peoples. Neil Hackey wanted a foul. Up ahead, Brunel's wide open. Transition quickly score. Brunel, all she does is run to the basket in that case, and they'll find her. Wait for us. slow to get back, slow to stop the basketball. Run a set something if you can against this zone to get a shot for Spears. She's yet to take a shot. Playing with that left knee brace also today. Been banged up a little bit the last couple of games. They've been real physical on her. Six to shoot. Williams. That's an offensive foul. Pushed off on Miles and got caught. 
Watch this, Saban. Quickly pushing Miles. He's got great ability. See one dribble, bam, puts it right on the money. All you got to do is run to the basket. She'll find you. It's nice. Her second assist so far tonight. She averages seven and a half per game. Number one in the ACC. And, oh, yeah, number one in the nation right now, too. And only a freshman. Well, here's the thing about that. As they get it inside to Nat Marshall, 16 to 2 Notre Dame. The ACC has determined, for reasons I don't really understand, that Olivia Miles is not eligible for the ACC Freshman of the Year award, which I think is a mistake. Yeah, she only played five games last year, six. But that's okay, she can make first team all conference. <laughs> she probably will. Yeah. Jewel Spear took her first shot of the day, but missed it right. And now a second chance opportunity for the Irish after the Brunel miss. See how fast, because they have the ability to score that no day, how much quicker Wake Forest has to push the basketball, and they're not getting good looks, they're not getting back, they're not getting their self set on offense. It's a good look there. Wake Forest trying to snap a five minute scoreless drought. Good look on the kick out. Harrison parries the three. Ooh, great job by Seville to keep that ball alive. Keep banging and banging. Harrison, who's been banged up a little herself, finally getting it on the court. A nice look and a knockdown three. Kai Harrison, not known as a three point shooter in the past, but she's made a couple this season. Yeah, he's her third one of the year. You're right. Made one in both the games down in Florida. That would be an asset for this team offensively if she could be a scorer for them. Miles moving the basketball. Setting up Citron, who rimmed it out from the corner. Sonia Citron has been the beneficiary of the ACC's determination that Miles is not eligible. Yeah. Citron winning most of the ACC Freshman of the Week. It's either been Sonia or Boston College's freshman big, Maria uh, Gakdeng. And she can shoot the basketball, too. You, you, you lose track of her sometimes. She's a pretty good shooter. That was an entry rhythm shot for Jewel Spear. Moved the defense. She found the gap. She attacked and took the shot. That's a good thing. Maybe that gets her going. Six straight points for Wake Forest after they trailed 16 to 2. Nice feed again. Marshall inside. Had good position. And she'll get to the free throw line with a buck 44 left in the quarter. Watch this, move the basketball, get the defense to suck up. See, she, she made a move that moved the defender a little bit because she's getting a chance to get in rhythm and she can knock that shot down. One of the few good looks she's had in the last couple of ball games. That was the 50th three-pointer of the season for Jewel Spear. Set a Wake Forest freshman record with 58 made threes last year. Think about five ACC games that Wake has played. Only two times has another player scored in double figures. She scored in double figures all those games, but only the Florida State game, Lamar had 17, and then in the Florida State game the other day, Lamar had 10. No one else has scored in double figures. They've got to give her some help. If their other people can score, that's going to make it easier for her to score. Good feed inside, a nice finish. Malaya Cole knocks down her first shot. And Malaya Cole has been very active, and when she is active inside, things happen for her. Nice pass, better finish. Coles is one of those players who can give some offense off the bench. Maddie Westbell missed the three, and Spear was fouled, secured the rebound. You know, it's the last few possessions. Wake Forest is tightened up on their defense, and they've been able to score. Watch this. There's a penetration. It gets two defenders there. A nice little bounce pass inside. Coles, hands are ready, able to finish. Good pass, good play. Notre Dame foul on the junior from Illinois, Anaya Peoples. As you get a look at the freshman from Wilkesboro, North Carolina, Malaya Coles. Final minute of the quarter. It was 16 to 2. Wake on an 8-1 run since. There's a gap. Find a gap. Move the defense. They're so wide right there. you got to split that. You might not settle for three. You may have to take a two, but a two is good. Alexandria Scruggs with three to shoot. Gets it on the glass. No. Coles on the stick back. Blocked. 
from behind by Citron. Shot clock back to 20. So Wake can't run out the oh. timer, but a beautiful pass. Harrison Nichols. Great vision. She split the defense, got there, they had to commit. She made a perfect pass. Coles again, ready to catch the ball. She finishes. Nice. 10-1 run from Wake Forest to respond to the great Irish start. Four seconds in the quarter. Mabry from the logo. Got it! Oh, you got to guard her to midcourt. What a player Dara Mabry has been from Jersey to Blacksburg to South Bend. Dara Mabry with unlimited range for Notre Dame. Irish by eight after one. Hard work? Sure. Guesswork? No thank you. Because when you're on a mission, you want to get it right the Got back into the game. Here's the mid-season Wooden Award watch list. Four players from the ACC nominated for that potential player of the year. Hard to believe Kanane and Kitley were best friends growing up outside of Greensboro and yeah. are two of the top players in the nation for different schools. I saw something the other day and they were both maybe a top 15 possible WNBA draft yeah. picks. Wouldn't surprise so, me at all. Yeah, they, you know, great. And Kabai is just dominant on the boards. The Spectrum, I'm not sure how much of the Hokies or Wolfpack you've watched, but both those, some, both those girls are, are stepping outside and shooting yeah. threes this year. Yeah. They've added that to their Phenomenal post games. And certainly Maddie Westbelt. Uh, Westbelt just can shoot. I mean, number five in the uh, conference in shooting percentage. That's a good ball movement right there for Wake. You gotta shoot that. Yeah, Westbelt rebounding a defense too. You gotta mention oh, that yeah. when talking well, yeah, about Maddie. Yeah, no question. Elbow jumper for Dotson. She hadn't scored yet for Notre Dame. That was just her second field goal attempt after she picked up an early foul and only played three minutes in the first. And that was one of the concerns that Wade had was how would you control Dotson? She hasn't got off to a good score, but this lady has. Miles miss, rebounded by Citron. Muscling through the contact and earning a trip to the free throw line for Notre Dame. You know, when you were talking about Citron, you know, a couple of times, me and three times being all freshmen in the ACC, and she kind of goes unnoticed, averaging about 12 a ball game, and just does that. Gets a rebound, knocks down three, runs the floor. She's had eight games already in double figures, and continues to be an X factor for this basketball team. It's a block. Interesting, the foul was on Scruggs, and they didn't give free throws, and then Mabry earns the trip to the line, and that Harrison shaking up down there? Yes. The junior who's had an injury plague season thus far. Has only played in half a week, 16 games, trying to tough this one out. So Mabry, 78% from the line this year. A fluid shot. Doesn't waste any motion, gets into it, finishes high, and follows through every time. Every shot is the same from her free throw line and most of the time from the perimeter. All Notre Dame fans fired up to see Mabry with 11 early points because she had only averaged about five and a half in their last four games, single digits in all of them. In the last four games to Notre Dame goes back almost to November. I mean, they didn't get to play a whole lot in yeah, December. Right. Played just two games since the Pittsburgh game 29 days ago. And they had to sit on the two-point loss to Duke for an extended time after the COVID pause. Mabry in the corner. Not this time. Battle for the board. Oh, Dotson ripped it away from Coles, but then unable to finish inside. Three chances to score. Notre Dame can't do it. Wake Forest does a great job getting that rebound. But did you see the penetration that time by Miles? Got inside, a little contact, missed a shot, got a rebound, and then kicks it out for a shot that maybe doesn't knock down. That was an official timeout right there with Citron having an issue. That allows subs to come in for both teams. Citron getting a little medical attention over there with the Notre Dame athletic trainer. Irish by 10. 
Nearly two minutes gone in the second quarter and maybe a little blood. So the officials are gonna give Citron a minute or two to get patched up over there. You know, Notre Dame did not shoot the ball well in their last couple games from the outside. They, they entered tonight just five of their last 25 from three-point range. But three of eight so far tonight. Tara Mabry has all three makes from beyond the arc for Neil Ivey's Irish. Well, they're not a team that, that takes or makes a lot of threes. 11th best in the conference came in only making 74 threes. But what they do is they get a lot of mid-range baskets. They get a lot of easy baskets on the defensive end. And you've got somebody like Mabry just got 30 of the 74 threes. Well, at least you know she's consistent knocking down shots. <laughs> <Yeah>, he is. <laughs> Notre Dame has assists on five of their seven buckets and four of those five assists for Olivia Miles. She's got four points, four assists, three rebounds. Let the triple-double watch officially commence with 28 minutes and three seconds of basketball remaining tonight. She had one triple-double. We showed you the graphic against Valparaiso early December. Doubt it will be the last for her freshman season. Let her be freshman of the year. Jewel Spear now one for three from beyond the arc, that same left wing spot. And Spear could not believe the foul was called. I think they called it on Coles. Reaching in from behind on Mabry. Beg your pardon, I think they gave it to Hines instead of Coles. Wait. Wake Forest has found themselves back in this ball game, but, but last couple of times not getting shots. And, and you can't let Notre Dame get on this little mini run. You can't let them put back to back to back baskets because they can do it so quickly. Good job coming up that time because you've seen Mabry knock down three. There's your high low. Beautiful passing. Brunel to Dotson and hung on the rim for an eternity. The iron unkind to the Stanford transfer. <laughs> All right, Timmy B. Brunel rattles it in. Point this out. Great hustle by Dodson. There were four Wake Forest players around when the ball was rolling around. She's somehow able to control it, kick it back, they get their offense, and eventually Notre Dame gets a score out of that. And those are those little plays that just kill you, absolutely kill you. Sam, that was my first uh, Timmy B homage of the season with the iron on kind. Hey, that's okay. That's okay. He's a legend. He won't mind. <laughs> nice. Spear switches it from 17. And I think the mid-range shot for her tonight against the zone can be there. Either on the side or coming down the middle of the court. She's got to be patient, but also be active when that shot's there. Another good pass. Brunel feeding Dotson. Oh, really it in. Didn't need a roll this time. And that's the problem playing this Notre Dame team. If you try to really come out and contest the pressure around the perimeter, Dotson's inside and also Westfield. And they can score in, in 10 to 12 feet. Good defense. Mora lost it. Brunel ahead to Mabry, who fires. Had a couple offensive rebounders there, but it's deflected out of bounds, and it'll be Wake Forest ball. Spacing, spacing to watch it. See, there's a cutter, and that moves the zone. And then you just, you gotta, you gotta work and talk and communicate. And then in that case, Becker's got to drop. You've got to drop deeper than the deep, and she didn't drop. And you're not blaming her totally. It wasn't pressure on the basketball either. But you saw what happens when you move the zone around, and you send a cutter through. There's going to be somebody open. There's your trap. Haven't seen a lot of trap action out of, out of Notre Dame. And Mora tried to throw it off Brunel's legs. A fan got Sam Brunel in his lap. Miles oh leaves it, goodness. nice dish, and Notre Dame's oh rolling. Her ability to get in the air, avoid the charge, and make a perfect pass to a driver, that's great. Wake's becoming unraveled a little bit, and there's Mabry giving a gift right back, intercepted by Harrison. Becker going baseline of the basket. Great decision by Becker. Do not settle for the three-pointer that time. Take it right to the rack. 
Kind of a helter skelter last 60 seconds here. Yeah, it is. But the problem is with your Wake Forest, you're not you're not heltering with it. <laughs> okay. Maybe they're heltering but not skeltering. There you go. In other words, you got to match baskets. You got to get a stop and match a basket. It's a huge possession, I think, for Wake. Well, after the dots and miss, Spear creates contact. And Mabry picks up her first foul. Irish have a 12 point lead. Showcasing ball movement. Olivia Miles, one of her five assists to Dodson for the easy deuce. Dara Mabry knocked down three point shoot. Came in having made 30. She made 63 last year. Catch and score. Great body control. Gets her shoulder square. Great elevation. Knocks it down. That's it. Everybody know I knocked that down. She gets rhythm. She does all her work before the ball even comes to her. Gets her feet set, she's got her eye on the basket. And as I mentioned a minute ago at a free throw, almost every time she takes a shot, the shot looks the same. Doesn't waste any motion. A knockdown three-point assassin. Came, transferred from Virginia Tech, even having already made 153 threes. And she's continued that at Notre Dame in two seasons. Following in her sister's footsteps in South Bend. Oh, really good defense from Samiel, ripping it away. A jump ball will get back to the Dinks. By the way, uh, Stan Dara's old team, the Hokies, in a battle with the Duke Blue Devils at Cameron right now. Hokies 54, Blue Devils 50 in the fourth quarter. That's that payback game for Duke. Yes, it is. Loose ball on the rebound, and it finds Samiel, and she scores. Nice job there, just continuing to battle. Samiel, you know, I talk about it almost every ball game. You know, she, you, she's the kind of player you want to have on your team because she's just talking. She's constantly in motion. She's pointing something. She doesn't give up the play. Nice job there, making an, an extra pass inside, not forcing it up time, and you get a score. And Samiel quietly having one of the better rebounding seasons in the history of Wake Forest women's basketball. Really is. Really, I mean, and, and that's because of how how active she is on the court. Watch this. Move the basketball. Remember, she starts that play on the wing. Inside, bangs, 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 doubles up, doesn't foul. Ball comes up. Look what I got. Nice pass inside by Conley. And guess who ended up with the play? Always in movement. Always constantly doing something. Banging with Westbelt inside right now. Yeah, she doesn't back down. You can win with her. She took a shot at the jaw right there, too. Mabry in the corner, her spot. Mabry is now three of seven from beyond the arc. And it was last touched by Wake. Mabry's not bashful, Stan. No. Nor should she be. <laughs> if you had a stroke like that, you wouldn't be either. Nice inside cut. They call it travel. No, Citron kind of lost her balance just enough to turn it over. The seventh giveaway of the half for the Irish and well Sonia's had four of them. Really good opportunity for Wake Forest to cut into this lead. Aaron pass Miles great hands head up oh great feed Mabry extra pass to Westbell. Wow. Man. You're gonna laugh at this I'm gonna watch a little couple of plays I got I got I was thinking about who she reminded me of. I, I'll tell you a minute. I know you're going to totally disagree with me because it's old school basketball. Wondering where you're I going. I mean, real old school. But it's, 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 it's. We have a young audience. I know. Well, then look it up. Reagan Conley could not connect from deep. Miles gets it to Westbelt. I was listening to a couple of Mike Bray press conferences yesterday. Notre Dame men's basketball. One of the things he said, there's a culture of passing that we've built in South Bend. That That is not just the Irish men. The, the no women's question. basketball team have a great culture of passing. Too. Watch this. Watch this. Dive there for a loose ball. That was middle on the floor, but Miles gets it. A little one-handed, underhand, flip, making the extra pass. That's pretty. I would like to see Mabry score off it just because of the pass, but love the unselfishness, the history, the culture of the pass. Nice finish. All right, who, who is that underhand pass? Tell, tell Bray I said hello. Tell Bray still he, he still owes me lunch. Now you're not getting that lunch. No, I, I'm done. <laughs> he still owes me lunch. 
No, but she reminds me, and I guess because I was looking at some some footage over the holidays, you know, we lost the late great you know Boston guy Sam Jones. Okay. And so I was looking at some stuff in the end and thought about one of my dear friends is Earl Monroe. Yeah. And she reminds me a lot of Earl Monroe because she's always giving you a knee, she gives you a leg. She doesn't she's never kind of straight up. It's underhand, there's a spin. Watch this, watch this. She, look at that. She's leaning forward. It's going to be something pretty here. There you go. With the left oh, hand. Oh, with the left I'm hand. To you. Oh, I'm trying to tell you. Don't hurt her, Miss Miles. Oh, my goodness. That's nice. Six points. Five assists, three rebounds for Miles. And nice. crawling over the rim. Becker gets her second bucket. But she gives you a little elbow. She gives you a, a knee. She comes in, she really doesn't protect the ball like you'd want him to all the time, but you're not going to steal it. Offensive foul there, yeah. Yeah. Mora took a shot to the face from Dotson. That's the second foul of Maya Dotson. <laughs> Sam Brunel quickly off the Irish bench to get her. Watch this, watch this. Look at that head up. Look, put you off. And it's up and under with the left hand. Bam! She gave you a lot right there, and that was what you see as a defender. I mean, did you stop the ball? Oh, she looked that way. I don't look that way. Oh, she's by you. Man. That was nifty. <laughs> that was cool. That's good camera work by our folks, too. Thank you for that. Morris staying with it. Got it in the rim, but could not fall. And it was last touched by Notre Dame. So said Mark Resch, the baseline official. They're going to talk about this. I think it was off weight. And now Katie Lukanich comes in and says, we're going the other way. Good bit of officiating there. Talk about it. Oh, Tough there wasn't much think. of a talk. Yeah. Was, she said, no, it was the Not other way. way. Yeah, well, that's a good bit. They, yeah. Sometimes they don't talk. They'll yep. tell you. Closing in on the final minute of this first half. Notre Dame shooting 40%. Wake after a slow start, up to 36%. Nice job doubling. Look at the width that you have in Notre Dame offensively. They really spread you out, which allows driving lanes for miles. A cutter gets through there, and you can suck up inside and get a pass. Hey, see what I tell you? There it was. Oh, that would have been assist number six, but Brunel couldn't finish. Wake's got to capitalize. You keep saying it over and over, but when they get these stops, they've got to be able to score. That was off the foot. Into the backcourt. Wake Forest's 12th first half turnover. And that's the 10th in this quarter alone. Yeah, and as much as we talk about Miles on the offensive end, not a bad defensive player either. Like I said, almost seven rebounds and he's coming already with 27 steals. Four second differential with a game and shot clock here. And not only is Miles six points, five assists, three boards, but no turns. And she has played every minute, Stan, of this first half. It's a nice That's matchup here. 11-day layoff for the Irish. Miles kicks it. Off the bounce, it's Mabry. Oh, again. I beg your pardon, Sam Brunel this time from downtown. Brunel makes it 37-20. to 20. Wake at the buzzer. Gets two for Harrison. Wake with the final bucket of the quarter. But Notre Dame wins that period 17 to 10. And the Irish head to the locker room with a 15 point lead after one half of basketball tonight, Winston Salem. How many shots do you want to see Jules Spear take in the second half, Stan? 15. Wow. She needs, I mean, she's got to shoot the basketball, but just because you got to shoot the ball. I mean, you just got to shoot the ball. You got to get some good rhythm shots. And like I said earlier, you know, you've got to get her some easy looks on some steals, some defensive plays, you know, run some sets and bounds. I mean, and they know this, but that's, you got to get her some easy things to make the hard things go. High low right there, good school. Ivory to pick up where they left off with Westfeld finding Dobson inside for the easy two. You're talking about Jewel Spear in these five conference games, not counting the day. 26 of 78 shooting from the field. 8 of 34 from the three line. It's been yeah. guarded hard. That's over 15 field goal attempts a game. Yeah. Samiel could not keep that foot off the line. It'll be Notre Dame basketball. Harrison getting the start in the second half. And she was sort of effective, if not so much slowing down Miles, but at least getting in her way a few times. Maybe he can also play the point. Miles to the basket. 
with four more dollars. She gets the feeling if she wanted to score 25 a game, she probably could, but that's not her style. No. She's got great explosion. And, and she does a lot of things, like I said, she does a lot of stuff with one hand, so she gets to the basket a little quicker than normal. If she's got a downfall, it might be only a 68% free throw shooter. I remember talking to Neil Ivy last year about Miles, even before Miles played her first game, and Neil was just so excited, so thankful that Olivia committed. Got right. The first phone call Neil made after she got the job was Olivia Miles. Hey, Olivia, I need you. Come to South Bend. <laughs> and uh, the pitch worked. Spear gives it up to Harrison. Back to Jewel with Miles in her grill. Minute gone in the second half. Irish has scored the first four of the quarter. Stretch the lead to 19. Becker fakes it, takes it. Notre Dame ball. You see right now, Jewel touched the ball a couple of times in the top of the key area and really didn't look at the basket. And what I'd like to see her maybe do is get the ball there, pass, and take and cut. Finding the area cut, maybe where Becker took that shot to get it on the weak side. Too late. Olivia Miles putting on a show. 10.6 rebounds now for the freshman. See that time they sent, see, see, sent her through. That was good. Got a, got a way to get the ball, but Miles does a good job in recovering. Excuse me, 10.6 assists. said 10.6 rebounds. She'll get a rebound. I mean, don't worry about it. <laughs> She's got three of those, too. Yeah, she'll get a rebound. That's nice. Becker with a right hand. And here comes Dotson the other way. Up ahead, Miles ahead of the pack. Hesitates, too strong off the glass. She'd have made that. I would just say, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Harrison saw a little gap. Kicks into the corner for Simiel, who hesitated. Watch how Notre Dame collapses on the basketball. They're doing a great job. There we go. Moving. Getting in passing lanes. Every time somebody is a shooter, especially Spear, they're there. And the big running down the field. Jim Hoover's going to have to take a timeout to settle this team down and kind of recharge the battery. They'll get run out if they don't. Eight zip Irish here in the second half. Largest lead of the night for Notre Dame, 45-22. Again, there's Miles in transition, the underhand pass, pushes ahead, make an extra right. pass and score. This is a team that moves the ball, pick and roll action, goes to high low, gets you a perfect basket. You're going to shoot a high percentage when you move the basketball as well as Notre Dame has done tonight. This transition goes in and scores, and when you score like that, good things happen for you. Notre Dame leading the league in assists, entering the night with about 19 per game. Three quarters of the Irish has made baskets tonight, courtesy of an assist. Just look at that, 12 assists on 16 field goals. Feels That's like more. Yeah, it's great ball movement. And, and the thing that I really like about it, this is an obvious thing, but it, people don't talk about it. They catch the basketball very well. A lot of times you throw the ball to players and they fumble it, fumble it, and ramble it. They catch the ball. Catch it with two hands, and in Miles' case, with one hand, it doesn't matter. That's a good look right there. Yep. Yeah. And she can make that little mid range shot and also can extend her game and knock down some threes from time to time. Just a, a little thought experiment. What, what would happen if uh, Wake put Jewel Spear at the ACC logo, the high post against the zone, try to get her I some think, touches I, there? That's a great thought, and you see a lot of teams do that to try to get a scoring or a perimeter player in their paint. Now, how does, how does Notre Dame adjust? Do they try to deny her the basketball, which I would, and that means that other shooters are going to be available to score on the wing, but they've got to be ready. It's not a bad idea. And she's got to be ready to catch the ball and willing to take this shot. Spear firing for three. Good look. She had to really work hard to get there. And when you're working that hard, it's very difficult to establish any type of rhythm as a shooter. Five straight for Wake out of the timeout.
Beer, 66 field goal attempts in her last four games. But only four shots in the first half tonight. Miles, great feed again to Dodson. Go ahead and mark that one too, guys, in the truck. Go ahead, that's building the highlight package. I don't have to talk about it, I'll tell you about it later. Irish back up 20. Dotson into double figures for the eighth time this season. Emile's pass rejected by Miles, who got the deflection, and the foul's going on the Deeks. Dotson gets great inside position, and she knows that it's going to be a nice pass. But, but Spears says, look here, she might be making passes, but I can hit jumpers. There you go, pass inside. Nice little left tinted off the glass. 20 points. That's what you got. TC's leading free throw shooter, having a spectacular freshman season. May have had the wind knocked out of her here. Watch the right side of your screen. Took one shot from behind and then kind of got drilled in the chest. And she did walk off the floor after an extended kneel in that paint area. Back on her feet, hydrating. She looks like she'll be good to go. Been a good hit. Football, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. She'll be back. Block in the back, perhaps. Yeah, maybe, yeah. She's uh, been freshman of the week four times, chasing Brianna Turner's ACC record six times. Brianna Turner was another good one who wore the blue and gold for the Irish. <laughs> 446 left in the third, Notre Dame by 20. Irish back home to take on Carolina on Sunday afternoon, 1 p.m. And then three straight road games after that for the Irish. Chestnut Hill, Pittsburgh, Charlottesville. Miles put it in a good spot, but Westfell did not get it off. Get a little deep. Coach Ivy was a pretty good player, too. Back in the day on that national championship team for the Irish. Even better a player than she is at color coding her little play sheet over there. She's pretty good at that too. Yeah. That was on Wake Forest in the rebound action. Wake Called it on Malaya Coles, her second. It was 37-22 at the half. Irish with a 10-5 lead in the third. Oh, Brunel to Miles. That was beautiful. She lulls you to sleep. And we told you she's got great explosion with the basketball, in that case, without the ball. And see, that's the thing you were talking about. This time you got Samil in there. She's got a face. There you go. There you go. That shot should be there. Should, should be there against the zone the way they're playing it. Now, the, the counter to that is that you front it, you make them throw over the top, but with a player like Smell, she's just got to be comfortable to shoot that. The problem with putting Spear in there is a size fact. But For I, sure. I, but, I, but I wouldn't hesitate trying to do that because I want to get her the basketball. Brunel, acrobatic finish inside, using her body to create space. What did we talk about a moment ago about the ability to catch the basketball? They get in high-low sets, and they catch it clean, and they finish it strong. From the left wing, that's nothing but three. easy for Jules Spear. Jules says, I don't need to go in the middle. I can take it in the wing and knock down a three. Well, Jules in double figures again every game this year. She's moving close to that 20, 22 game streak that uh, Tracy had. Brunel. Beg your pardon. She, Jules, she, Jules scored game, nine. She had nine yeah, against, nine Dodd, against Georgia, Georgia Tech. Tech. Yeah. Nine is just a single digit, I believe. Reaching foul <laughs> called on Peoples. Again, nice little no, backdoor, no, high, no, low, no, UCLA no, cut, no, call it what you want. Give and go basketball, no look. You can't trail, and if you get beat, that's what happens. And then what'd she do? She's so used to people telling her thank you for the pass. She said, thank you for the pass, little point right there. I like that. Out of Miss Miles. 
Give it and take it. Notre Dame, long associated with UCLA. The Irish pulling off some of the great upsets in college basketball history, knocking you, off the Bruins. You know, my buddy Ray Martin was on that team. That's right. Digger, right there. I told you about that. You can, if you ever see that picture, you see somebody jumping in the air with the fist up in the air. That's my man Ray. It's chatting with Digger yesterday, courtside at uh, Purcell Pavilion. Look at you, name dropping. Who has to talk you, to? You dropped the first. No, you brought it up. I just told you about Ray. I mean, that's actually putting a living person to the picture. <laughs> Irish by 21 here. Ken Hoover clearly frustrated. So that's why I like hanging out with you because you know everybody. You know you know people. See, we know the same people. We run the same circles. I like that. I don't know about that. <laughs> Maddie Westfeld too strong in the rebound for Becker. Transition opportunity. Somehow that pass finds Coles and the slip through to Samil and Westfeld swatted it from behind. And Notre Dame did a nice job. You're exactly right. How that ball got through there, but then they hurried back and got in defensive position. Had two players around the ball, another trailing the block. Williams can't connect, but Samiel runs runs down another rebounder, six of the night. Spear going to work on Mabry. Williams to Coles. Nice. Plants in the paint, and when she can catch it, kind of similar to what we've seen a few times out of Dodson tonight. When she gets it in the paint, you can almost count that as two. Third assist for Elise Williams. You know, quite as you said, Elise Williams has had a nice start to her freshman season as well. Spear, hop, skip, and a jump, making the catch to pack three, wouldn't fall. Westbelt, quick outlet for Miles, four on two coming. Dara Mabry from the wing. Brunel on the glass. Final minute of the third. Wake has been competitive if you look quarter by quarter, Stan, but Notre Dame won the first by eight, the second by seven. They're leading the third by four, and the 19-point game that could be 22. Yes, it is. Sam Brunel buries the triple. Not a lot you can do about that. You stop the penetration, but you got someone coming from the weak to be able to knock down a three. 14 off the bench for Brunel. Kind of rediscovering her freshman form a little bit. Irish can take the final shot of the quarter. Comfortably ahead, looking for their ACC road win at Wake Forest. Miles behind the back, through the legs. Inside, Mabry, you kidding me? Stop the fight. Stop the fight. This is not fair with Miles making dishes like that. It's hard out here when you got that kind of tough. Miss Miles, I tip my hat to you. You got one more assist to get 10. I'm it's a nine assist stand, each one better than the last. <laughs> Behind the back, one-handed pass right on the money. Watch this. Boom, head up, balance, and whips. He gets rid of it so quickly. They're quarterbacks that can't release the ball that fast and recognize defense. You know, I'm giving her the 10th the assist now just because I feel like it. Let's want to go ahead and do it. Get over it. I didn't realize you had that power. Yeah. I can't, right. I can't change it with graphic, but I'm just kidding. Congrats to Olivia on the double-double, according to Stan Luter. <laughs> See if she plays in the fourth quarter. She yeah. played 29 of the first 30 minutes, but she'll begin the fourth on the bench. It's a little one-guard front zone action by Notre Dame. Williams Good. unable to bank it in. Jewel Spear also beginning the fourth quarter on the bench for Wake Forest. Leading the Demon Deacons with 11 points. Played 27 minutes thus far. Mabry was hit. And she makes the shot. Dara Mabry continues to make impressive buckets for Notre Dame. She's now got 15 tonight to lead the Irish. And the fouls on Williams, her second. And even, even under pressure and being fouled, the technique was still there. She, she finished. She got a shoulder square to the basket and gave herself an opportunity. She just didn't throw it up. And, and you can, I mean, you can say it's really easy to see. She's an excellent shooter. And she'll be frustrated on the bus thinking about that missed free throw yeah. later tonight. Oh, yeah, no question. 
Scruggs back outside for Williams, and now Conley. Foul's going on Notre Dame. You know, Sam, we, we can gush about the passing and Notre Dame's offense and the versatile scores that they got. I, I, I like what Notre Dame has done defensively tonight. They've played with an intensity in the zone that, uh, that, that kind of says they're ready to play after a week and a half off. Well, Westfield is 6-3, and, and Brunel is 6-2, and you got yeah, Dotson is about 6-3, 6-4. So they're very, very long, and you've got Mills that's always active in Mabry. So when they play zone, and then you bring Citron in the game, you bring Brindley in the game, they're, they're big, and they're, and, and they're active, and they're playing hard. They'll play with about eight players. And so they've made it very difficult for Wade See, back on defense. Cole's like a freight train after this teal coming, chugging down the floor. Last touch by Notre Dame. It'll be wake ball from the baseline. But did you see how they, they all rushed, got in the blue, and so what looked like a possible good shot for Coles, you know, becomes a shot that's deflected and out of bounds. They got inbounds under, and the wake does a great job running the inbound sets. But uh, they're doing a good job. They're committed to the defensive end. Alexandria Scruggs will get to the free throw line, looking for her first points of the night. Scruggs averaged six and a half points per game a year ago. Right around that mark this year, although just 21 points in her last six ball games. He's one of the players that I think can and needs to score more going forward for Wake Forest. I do not disagree with you. Now she's got the ability because she can play inside as well as outside. She's got a nice stroke, but uh, you know she missed some ball games around the holidays too. You know, a little, you know dinged up in the Nebraska game, and, and she's just not really found a rhythm. And maybe also this is gonna sound crazy, but basketball people understand she hadn't found a spot on the floor where she's comfortable to score from. Is she scoring inside, or is she a good three-point shooter? She's had a couple of games where she's knocked down some threes. I remember the game against uh, Cornell, she had a deep three. She uh, Against uh, UMBC, she had four threes in that game, in that win. But I don't know where her spot is right now. And and she's got to, if she here finds a range, that's one other plus for Wake Forest on offense. See, they got to post it up. Or they had it on the wing, I'm sorry. Williams, extra pass. Coles unable to finish. Ball finds Williams. She'll bang it in. Deeks within 20. Eight and change to play. So a little one, two, two. Three quarter court pressure after it. Mabry will handle that okay. She'll play the point. Six nothing run over the last minute for the Deeks. Connolly long and athletic there as a freshman can guard that. Brunel running two by Scruggs. Maybe Miles will get her 10th assist right here. Nope, not yet. Although you already gave her the double double. Yeah, because they sight. That's a nice play right there. I want to see more of that for Becker. Get her in the open court and just attack. She's got the length. She's got the athleticism. Well, it's an eight-nothing run for Wake Forest, and Neal Ivy calls the time. Game was the national championship that the Irish won. Drafted by the Indiana Fever, she played five seasons in the WNBA. Came to be an assistant from Muffet McGraw, then went to the Memphis Grizzlies as an assistant coach in the NBA. And when Muffet decided to step aside, Neal Ivy was the clear choice for the Irish on her way to her 22nd win as the Irish head coach here tonight. Assuming they can hang on to the 18-point lead with seven and change remaining. Wake is on an 8-0 run. That Maya Dodds What was that? Snaps. What was that? Did Miles make that pass? <laughs> Check your stat sheet. That was officially the 10th assist for the freshman from Phillipsburg, New Jersey, <laughs> Olivia Miles. And I emphasize she's a freshman, so I'm flabbergasted as to why the ACC took her out of the running for freshman of the year. Lee. 
Lee Butler, Lee, and the rest of the crowd, you, you guys, this is Evan Lepper saying I'm going to follow up follow on it. Follow up on it for answers. answers. You, you, you give me the answer that they give you. Brunel lays it in. From what I understood, the, the reasoning, the rationale is she has an unfair advantage over other freshmen because she played six games last year. And that that is... I'll say that's a reasonable point, but there's a however. As Miles lays it in with a left hand. That was really pretty for the freshman. We call her the freshman. She is a freshman. Freshman. I'm kind of hobbling on Ka Caitlin Gilbert got hurt her freshman year. Played seven games, 18-19. As a redshirt freshman, she was named the all-freshman team in 2020. There's an inconsistency here. So can she make the all freshman team or you and not be the freshman of the year? I don't believe the ACC is going to let her be on the all freshman ballot. Well, which is preposterous. Well, this has been a strange year. And before the at the end of the third quarter, she was rubbing her leg, had the little machine and doing some. I don't know. She just took a little misstep right here. I don't know. But she immediately said, hey, come get me. So hopefully that's. That'll be okay. Double-digit assist for the fifth time this season for Miles tonight. Yeah. Along with 14 points, 11 assists. And I'd be surprised if we saw her again. A little quick, uh, quick 6 0 run for Notre Dame to create the separation they had earlier. Watching her on the sideline and the way they've got her foot prop looks like it may, you know, not speculating, but it could be like a cramp. But whatever, they'll let us know and hopefully she'll be back soon. Deep three for Spear. She's got wow. that range. Wow. She just does it so unassuming. Yeah. You know, it's just like, okay, boom, knock the shot down. Let's get back and work. She made 10 threes in that game against ETSU, and she scored 40. Most by any ACC player in a game this year. Under five minutes in the fourth. And an offensive foul. Illegal screen called on Notre Dame. How many feet away? Get the tape measure out. Bam. A long way. 28, 29, 30 feet. But the one she made against East Tennessee was was about where Mabry, yeah, maybe about two feet further in, you know, closer to half court. Samiel back to Scruggs all the way to the bucket. That's nice. And I was about to say where Scruggs was initially to make the pass would not be a bad shot for her, but she moved without the basketball, and I think that's what you're going to have to do if you wait for us to get those easy baskets and create some offense more for Spear as well. And Jewel that time doesn't do it, but uh, Steven, uh, Scruggs does. I like the fact that Wake Forest has stayed engaged in this basketball game. It would be very easy to get sloppy, to, to, to not play with any motivation. You feel like they can cut it with this lead. And they've got, you know, you know, they got to be ready to play on Sunday. Wake will be in Pittsburgh on Sunday. Take on Lance White and the Panthers. Notre Dame has Courtney Bangahart's North Carolina Tar Heels. UNC taking down Virginia Tech on Sunday, bouncing back from their loss in Raleigh. Miles appears to be okay. Up ahead to Mabry, and the foul. I feel like Mabry's the shot maker, and that helps Miles pile up the assists. <laughs> Number 12 for Olivia. It's, it's good work if you can get it. Push it ahead, you don't hesitate. Throw the ball ahead, you know Mabry's got a chance. 17 for Dara. Hey, stand up. On a seven-game Thursday night in the ACC, upset alert in Louisville, Kentucky right now. Syracuse tied 62 all with the Cardinals with 6.30 to play in the fourth. Woo! That's a Syracuse team that got absolutely walloped. Last Thursday night by Boston College and then lost at home to Duke this past Sunday. That surprised me the margin of that game last week. 
Similar spot. <laughs> Has 17. That's the spot we were talking about a minute ago for, for Scrubs, but you see the spot for Spear. She loves that left wing above the three arm. And she's got space to get the ball to her early. She gets her feet set and she's able to bury that shot. Well, Jewel had a quiet first half, but she has picked it up here in the second. 12 of her 17 since halftime. That time Dustin comes out and runs her off her spot. Spear, a little razzle dazzle. Harrison, she should have shot that. That was one extra pass. Somehow the ball plays with a wig. Interior players, but nothing doing there, and it'll be the Irish going the other way. <laughs> Notre Dame certainly has an ambition of being one of the top four teams heading into the ACC tournament. I'd say that's the expectation. Certainly, NC State Louisville through the first half of the season have separated themselves a bit, but a lot of competition for those three and four spots, those double buys. Georgia Tech, Carolina, Duke, Virginia Tech, obviously the Irish. Florida State might have something to say about it. February's going to heat up. High ball screen, the horns at. This one's my shooter. Samil fouling Marshall. Number four on Wake Forest's Olivia. And here's Nat Marshall, the sophomore from Queens, New York, going to the line. Missed all of last year rehabbing an ACL injury. Did not play the last couple games. Marshall back on the floor tonight. Three points in eight minutes. Rebound number seven for Samil, averaging about eight a game this year. She'll pop the three and hit. It's her ninth game this year, making at least one three. Ninth game making three. She's had uh, five or more rebounds in 14 ball games this year. Doesn't put up the great numbers. I think she only had one game this year where she scored in double figures, but I, I just like her energy on the court. Two minutes to play. Notre Dame trying to improve to 12 and 3 and 3 and 1 in the ACC. Miles! <laughs> that looked like it, going in. it was going in, didn't it? <laughs> and somehow she lands in the front row. She's hobbling a little bit. Getting a word from her point guard of a coach. I'm going to ask Neil Ivy before Sunday how Olivia's attitude as a freshman compared to the attitude that Neil had as a freshman playing for Muffet McGraw. You're going to ask her that? That's what I'm going to ask her. I can't wait. Tell me what she says. Hello. Tune in Sunday at 1 o'clock. I'll do that. You have, After you have talked to Digger and you were hanging out with Bray. Well, Bray will be in Blackburg Bray will be in, in, in D.C. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I know you. I mean, you, you know. Oh, we keep in touch. Yeah, I know you do. Yeah, Bray. <laughs> I need to have a talk with you. I mean. <laughs> He was dancing in the student section last night after they beat Clemson. Shocking. After he went to the dining halls the day before and jumped on top of a table. In a couple different dining halls, he literally leapt on a table to tell the students to get to the game on Wednesday night. It worked.
Notre Dame men are four and one in the ACC. Notre Dame women are about to be three and one in the ACC. It's a basketball school, South Bend, yeah. Indiana. It's funny how that's happened, isn't it? Although they are excited about Marcus Freeman. Their 35-year-old head football coach. Of course, the Notre Dame uh, men's soccer team had three players drafted in the first round of the MLS Super Draft earlier this week. You are, you are Mr. Notre Dame right now. I'm impressed. Now, here's what I would like you to be able to do when you come back from this trip when I see you next week, okay? Eh? Have swag with you. <laughs> okay. you. You got all this other stuff you're pushing. Make sure you don't come back in the head, all right? I'll bring you a copy. You're going to talk to Coach Ivy. I'll bring you a copy of the student newspaper that I was reading yesterday, that'd, Rattler. That would be fine. That would be fine. I don't mind reading it. Said, but, hey, but, you know, you got to talk to Coach Ivy. you got questions for her. You know, we can always get in touch with Coach Bray. Let's get, you know, let's get, get Bray swag. Double X. <laughs> <laughs> More than one. Let's see what I can do. Samil stays with him. Keep getting rebounds. Oh, Keep oh, shooting. Oh, Keep oh, getting oh, rebounds. Oh, That's oh, Olivia Samil. Second game of the year, double figures for Olivia Samil, and all of a sudden, she's got a double-double, 12-10. Double, yes. It's her first one of the year. Yep. But she just, I mean, you know, I hate to keep banging on it, but it's, it's out there. We got a shot of her. She plays hard. Not to say that other players don't, but she's just, she's around the ball. She's talking. She's constant. You know, to quote Jen Hoover, who says, quote, she is our toughness. Yes. Yeah. And you've got to have a player like that. Remember how, how Alex was here for a couple of years while I talked about her being the glue girl? Uh, Kept everybody. Alex the and, and, Yeah. Yeah. And everybody was everybody was around. Well, she's just the toughness. And she she's moving. She's talking. She's banging. She can knock down a shot. She's got more and more confidence that it was blocked, partially yep. blocked. Yes, it was. Finish it right there. Scrub staying that with it. Is good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. She can be tough in the paint. Ooh. Final minute. Here at the Joel. Didn't get a chance to talk about it. I want to still got a mo. Jasmine Perkins, who's the uh, basketball operations, they were working on getting those this 80s nights. 80s nights. So they had to shoot. They had the Air Jordans on. She and Dan. I just saw the Pat, Pat Pat logo get that on the video Pat, board yeah, before you the game. Yeah, I saw that. Right. I think Aaron Davis had two. I know. Sitting on the bench with the best shoes. I said, hey, 80s day. I can relate. Take some of that, too. <laughs> so you've given up on going to Louisville now. You go, you, you know the day every day, right? Next Thursday night, I've just gotten back from Louisville. I know, yeah, that's why I said it. <laughs> so there's the shoes. 80s night, the Jordans. Yeah, they, they, they got a good hookup. Jasmine Perkins. They were, they were lacing them up. It's how you look for the ball game. I said, you know, all right. Did you, did you try to get some of those for yeah. your, your swag closet? 14. Yes. You're shameless. <laughs> shameless tonight. <laughs> Look who's talking. Scruggs from deep. Not today. That's what I want to see out of her. Scruggs has 10 all in the second half. Very good. Very good. A lot of things you can take away from this basketball game if you're Wake Forest. You're playing a very good Notre Dame team. But to see Scruggs maybe find her rhythm, that's good. Jewel Spear, and you know what you're going to get. You know what you're going to get out of, out of Spear. You know what you can get out of Smith. That's very good to see her knock down a few threes. Neil Ivey takes the timeout as you check out Alexandria Scruggs, who's really had a solid second half. When the Golden Bulls at E. Smith High School in Fayetteville, North Carolina, knock you down three. I'm sure you know who Alex Scruggs' uncle was, or is. I do. The great John Bagley. Yeah. Boston College great. 11 years in the NBA for the Cavs, Nets, Celtics, and Hawks. I guess you want some Hawks stuff, too. 
Bagley's just good yeah. for my boss. Yeah. Yeah. Boss Lounge. John Bagley's one of the first Celtics I remember watching in the early 90s. Really? I mean, obviously Larry Bird and Kevin McHale yeah. and Robert yeah. Parrish, but kind of in the aftermath of that big three era. The good old days. Reggie Lewis and Dana Barrows and D. Brown and Rick Fox and John Bagley. A lot of great memories. I can. I remember watching Neil Ivey in the Final Four, 2001. That was an incredible run by that team. Matched by the uh, Arike Agumbawale well, miracle shot team from more recently. Two national championships for Notre Dame this century in women's basketball. Trying to get back to that level. And certainly with Olivia Miles, quarterback in this crew, they are in a fantastic position. Ooh. Matt Marshall missed the layup. Jewel Spear nice pass. to Becker. Gets it to oh, a 10-point game. Wow. wow. And that's going to do it. Well, I'll be. <laughs> that's a good pass. I'm glad to see that. 74-64, the final. Notre Dame improves to 3-1 and one in the ACC. <laughs> And they remain perfect against the Demon Deacons. Neil Ivey gets her 22nd win as the coach of the Irish. And they look forward to heading back to South Bend to take on the Tar Heels on Sunday. Final thought from you, Stan, on 